This is the Monday, February 14th meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. First thing we have to do is approve the agenda. So I'm gonna remember the Planning Commission's ready. Make a motion to approve the agenda. Marcella's in theme for the day. I'll move to approve the agenda. <laughs> All right. You should have said, I would love to. <laughs> would love to approve the agenda. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> we have a second. I'll second. Second for Marion. Those in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Agenda approved. Let's proceed. Uh, next, we have comments from the chair. Um, I. I don't think I have any comments. I mean, my, my thoughts about tonight are that we need to get through um, this memo and we're gonna be doing some revotes on the uh, on on the zoning changes that uh, that we wanna do. I think we're we're obviously mostly in agreement on everything, but we have some amendments and some tinkering that we're doing last minute. Uh, and then we'll be handing it off to the city council. The memo is for city council and also for the public's benefit. So this, this memo is, is we plan to distribute as widely as we can so that people are aware of what's going on. Uh, that's the main order of business for tonight. We also have the economic development chapter of the new city plan, but frankly, uh, I'm not sure we'll get to it. And, uh, I don't know, it might be better to put it off to give it its give it full attention at the proper meeting next time. But we'll see what um, what happens. And you guys can tell me what you think about how you feel about that as, as things unfold here. Does anyone have anything to bring up before we move on? So we'll probably go through this, but these the, at the last meeting, which I missed some amendments came up to which which items or it's it's new things it's no one's like we haven't changed course on anything that was decided before or anything it's it's just new stuff has come up oh okay um, that, that we're going to learn about during that discussion yeah okay. yeah yeah the it's, the list is kind of laid out in the agenda of what what are the items for consideration so one of them, if you remember that Marcella had brought up, there's a parcel near Whittier Avenue that seemed like it should be moved into a different neighborhood. So it was related to what we were looking at before. We didn't end up doing anything about it, but Mike suggested that we should, and we were all cool with it at the time, stuff like that. Um, so, uh, Okay, so with that, I'm gonna move on to general business. There are a few people in the meeting right now who are not planning commissioners. So if anyone has anything to bring to our attention or anything they'd like to bring up that's not on the agenda already, that's not related to zoning changes or economic development chapter of the city plan, now would be the time. So uh, just let us know. No, so Doug and Alan are here for the, the riverfront district boundary adjustment on Sabin's pasture. And uh, so Dan hates, I was gonna mention this at the in the comments from the chair where I can mention now for general business. Dan is the intern that I mentioned at the last meeting that's gonna be working with me over the spring semester. So uh, I invited him to, to sit in on the, our planning commission meeting and just kind of see how these things are run and handled and uh, familiarize himself with who we are. That's wonderful, Dan. Uh, we're glad to have you here in Montpelier. Glad to have your help too. Um, so we appreciate that. Okay. Is there anything else you had, Mike, before we move on? Sorry, okay. I didn't mean to. Okay. Didn't mean to charge ahead. So it looks like we don't have anything for general business. Looks like no one's in the room with Mike. So let's move on to review and to discuss the zoning amendment memo. Um, the first thing we are planning to do is uh, is to, to have a motion to reconsider the zoning amendment forwarded to the city council on January 10th. So Mike, you listed those things in order like that because you 
you think we sh we should open up the amendment? We could do them in there. whatever we could do them in whatever order, but we um, we should have a motion to reconsider um, again, just so everybody's on on board and on the same plane. Any of these times we go through these processes processes, they become very um, litigious at times. So even though we have no reason to believe that this is going to be challenged at any point, we do want to make sure that we dot our I's and cross our T's to make sure that somebody doesn't come back later on to try to yeah. get a procedural violation. So because we already voted to forward the amendment to city council for consideration, um, they haven't taken it up, they haven't opened anything. So it's appropriate for somebody and it was unanimous, so it doesn't matter who, um, uh, according to Robert's rules to reconsider something, it has to be somebody who was in the affirmative to reconsider it. And then, um, so we just looked for a motion and a second to reconsider the memo, um, uh, the amendment, and then we can reopen the conversation on the various elements. Okay, so I think, I think the simplest thing for us, uh, I think it would go the smoothest if we just walk if mike if you'll walk us through the memo walk us new these walk us through these new items as you're doing that and then after we have all of the information we'll just do all of the motions one right after the other after we've already heard everything that way we don't jump the gun and and vote on something prematurely does that sound good to everyone okay so I'm just gonna hand it off to you, uh, Mike, um, to give everyone some background. Mike drafted a memo, we discussed it last time. I made some changes to the memo, sent it back to Mike. Mike had some things to change. Uh, so he's just gonna walk us through the current state of it, which should more or less be the final version, but we'll still have chances now to point out. Like I noticed there's some underlying underlining and things like that that need to be polished up but, okay. yeah more um, than more than happy to make any more of those those amendments to this um those we can make afterwards if we have to to the memo um i think at this point we'll just, i'll just hand it off to you to to do a final edits or whatever um okay but, okay go ahead mike yeah, we'll if you find through. some so i yeah after the last meeting kirby went through and did a, a strikeout version i did uh, you know, accepted all of his changes with a few minor edits um, and then went through the um, the three items that needed to get reconsidered. So the first one to get reconsidered, and we'll get this pretty quick so we can get to Doug and Alan so we can hear their, um, uh, hear their pitch, but just so we get through these other two really quickly. The first was to consider adding six Whittier, uh, Whittier Ave to or Whittier Street to the Harrison Ave map amendment. So we had talked about, maybe what I should have done is open this up earlier, revise request. bigger sorry so you guys able to kind of see this maybe make it a little bigger for you yeah it's a good size um so if you can see my cursor what we uh so this is what what i did to the memo is i added in current and proposed so what we have is here's harrison ave that is currently in purple and in the revision it will be yellow what we had approved was everything except for this parcel here which kind of noses in so i had we had approved it before with 19 and what we will be doing is adding in number 20 and that's this little parcel here and the reason for that is um the house that this this sits on is actually sitting about where my cursor is. It's, they have a big parcel and they squeeze their house on the little tiny 
um, peninsula that sticks out to Whittier. So it wouldn't make any sense to have somebody on that street be part of um, be part of the College Street neighborhood. And uh, I think Marcella pointed that out. And at the time, we kind of just let it go. But afterwards, I kind of thought about it and took a look at things and said, no, we should add number 20 in. So that's my first one I would want you guys to reconsider is adding that parcel in to um, what is number one on the, the list. Um, so that was the first change. The second change we'll consider is a clarification to the wetland hearings requirement. Let me roll down to that. A little bit faster here. We are down to signs, fences. Nope. Let's just go and buy it. Hold on. All right. So it's right here. So the clarification on hearing for state wetland permits. So the specific amendment. This draft would add a few words to note that when uh, to note when a hearing um, qualifies for an exemption. That when a hearing <clears throat> that when an applicant qualifies for an exemption that they also do not need a hearing. Um, so the revision, and it's a little clearer in the strikeout, will remove number one from under 3006.B uh, and instead insert a new number one under 3006. And I'm going to regret not having grabbed my zoning regulations. Hold on. So 3006 point B is applicability, which basically says what needs to meet these requirements. And initially, what had been discussed is a little bit in the background. The intent of the section has always been that the city only regulates wetlands and vernal pools that show on the natural resources inventory map. We also exempt any project from needing um, to meet these rules if they receive a state wetlands permit. Unfortunately, these rules also state all projects needing impact wetland uh, that impact wetlands need a hearing. So it was unclear when you get a permit. So that's a little bit of the confusion. The issue, if you were to actually look at the rules in the strikeout version, is that we started to get so many exemptions that we had we started to talk about exemptions, but we had exemptions of exemptions and exemptions. So what we did is 3006B talks about applicability. Who needs to get a permit? So that's just going to be clear. The provisions of this section only apply to lands identified on the wetlands and vernal pool map on the natural resource inventory at the initial filing of the permit. Period. So there, there it is. It's, that's the only thing that applies to applicability. Point C is the section that talks about whether or not you need a hearing. So that's why when we go back up here. So we removed all those exemptions. We had initially jammed all those exemptions under the applicability statement, which really kind of wasn't very clean, and we probably shouldn't have. Um, so what we did was we took it out from under the applicability. We made the applicability nice and clean. Point C talks about hearings, so that stays the same. Development subject to this section shall require a hearing, uh, require approval of a waiver under the DRB meeting standards of blah, blah, blah. Um, and what C now would have is an exemption that says um, if you're exempt, I don't know if I've got it specifically written out here. That says development that is required to obtain a state wetlands permit shall not be required to hold a hearing unless the project imp impacts a vernal pool, but of course those are vernal pools identified on the natural resources map. And then under D, we talk about specific standards. So under here is where we talk about development um, that 
is required to get a state wetlands permit is, is assumed to meet these development standards unless the project impacts a vernal pool. And that's just because the vernal pool rules at the state are different than the local. We have stricter vernal pool rules, but they still only apply to vernal pools on that map. So, um, so that's maybe a lot of stuff I just glazed a few people over with, but um, really what it was was we had all these exemptions jammed under B and we've broken them out to make it clear by putting one exemption under C and one exemption under D. Nothing has really changed. We haven't changed the rules. We've just changed how we talk about them so it's clearer in the, in the written text. So that's those two. Um, the third and final one I'll, I will introduce and then I will, um, you know, let Doug or Alan comment if they want to. So on the memo I sent you guys on Friday, and I think I put a reference in there, there is now a number 11. So we had our 1 through 10 that we had public hearings on. We now have an 11. And 11 is adjustments to the riverfront boundary and savings pasture. And the specific amendment is to change the adjusted boundaries. And I can move up here. There's my there it is. Adjustment. Um, so a uh, map change to adjust the eastern boundary of Riverfront District 40 feet to the west and to bump out a 500 foot section of the northern boundary by 90 feet. Uh, and there's a image below. The background, Sabin's Pasture is an undeveloped 100 acre parcel near the eastern end of Berry Street. This privately owned parcel has been subject of development proposal in the past and has been debated publicly many times. Back in 2017, uh, the City Council debated how to zone Sabin's Pasture, and I think we talked about this a little bit before, and they eventually decided to have 15 acres of the lower pasture closest to Berry Street to be zoned riverfront and the remaining to be zoned rural. And a, and a set of lines were roughly sketched out to match that request. So that is um, the, the proposal the Planning Commission had sent to City Council was to have it res six, which would have resulted in about 400 units across Sabin's pasture. City Council didn't like that, so they they decided to have a high density zone near in Riverfront and a lower density up in rural. And the calculation when you do the math on that is roughly 400 permits, uh, 400. Um, parts of uh, units. So that was kind of how they came out with that 15 acre number. Um, so recently a development team has started to pull together a proposal to develop the lower pasture and they found three things. Uh, some of the land set aside in Riverfront for development is not developable and other land that is developable is in the rural area. And second, their parcel boundary on the zoning map was not accurate on the western side and therefore they did not have full 15 acres. And the actual amount of their land in Riverfront turns out to be only 14.1 acres. <clears throat> so their development proposal identifies a good building site on the northern edge of Riverfront, but the building will cross the line into the rural district, thereby prohibiting its development. So they have a set of buildings that they wanna build, one of which would overlap the rural line. So their proposal is therefore to bring in the Eastern line 720 which is 720 feet long by 40 feet so if you're looking and it's a little gray on a lot of maps and maybe i can make this a little bigger again if it doesn't mess with people too much they want to there's a yellow line that's roughly kind of going along here this is berry street down here um caledoni spirits is across the street if you're trying to get perspective so you'll see the yellow line kind of comes up. That's the zoning line currently. Unfortunately, you see this gray line. Ooh, I'm not doing a good job following it. That's their actual property line. So they kind of don't own this piece in the middle that was part of their 15 acres. So what they wanted was not to make this any bigger um, area wise. What they just wanted to do was to get the 15 acres that city council had kind of agreed they should have so they want to bring this line in 40 feet bonk and they want to extend this one by 90 feet and this is 500 feet long 500 
by 90 and 40 by 720. So that is their request. Um, and that way the building site that they had proposed up here that I think roughly would have put a building in this area kind of has the room to get built with a little bit of flexibility. So if they have to move the building slightly, they don't have to come back with another request. They have enough room. Um, and that's really the, the nature of their request. Um, so yellow lines current, green is proposed. Um, the final revised district will be 15 acres, slightly or slightly less. Um, public comment is none. This request was submitted after the close. Of, and this is the memo to city council. Um, so the public did not get an opportunity to comment. As a result, the planning commission recommends to council do additional outreach regarding this proposal. And then I, I am staff is recommending approval of this, and I've put it highlighted. You guys, if you guys want to approve this, then we can um, make this approval. So that's why that is highlighted. So I will. I don't know if somebody has questions on that, or if um, Doug or Alan wants to correct me on anything I I said. Yeah, I was going to ask if Doug or Alan would like to, to provide, any, provide any info. And then after that, the Planning Commission could ask Mike whatever questions they have. Be glad to. Good evening. Um, Mike, you did a fantastic job of summarizing. Appreciate it very much. Um, for the Commission's knowledge, the modifications result in a zone district of approximately 14 and a half acres, well under the 15. Um, and once again, um, I'm available for any comments or discussion that anyone would, would like to have. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Doug. Um, do any of the planning commissioners have any comments or questions right now? You know, I, I just, I don't know, Mike, if you remember, but why did the city council make the original decision where they did, you know, for that 15 acres? So the original, the original part that they wanted was to um, allow the higher density development in the lower pasture. And so um, <clears throat> I roughly tried to lay out the lower pasture on this yellow line. Um, I guess I got to use this mouse or you guys don't see it. Um, and kind of put that out as a, as a presentation. This was, this was a really fluid time. I mean, we had lots of proposals, lots of people with ideas for, and a lot of debate about whether the, the Planning Commission's approach was right. Maybe this all should be um, in rural. Maybe there, maybe there should be a separate um, Sabin's Pasture Zoning District that would have its own rules. Um, Eventually, the, the Planning Commission didn't like that approach, and eventually, you know, uh, staff uh, succeeded in saying that that's really not fair to, to kind of give them their own unique rules. They, they should be zoned similar to some of their surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, and so that's what won out. Um, so that lower pasture idea was just to have greater density closer to Berry Street, where we already have some density. That's, that's the bottom. Yep. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think the, that sums it up pretty well. Okay, yeah, the so point, yeah. the actual, like, where the line is by 40 feet or 60 feet was not, you know, there's no scientific purpose to it. There's no water issues or anything else. No, there's no no issue like that. I tried to approximately put that line, the yellow line, where I thought the edge of the wooded area was. I didn't have the benefit of the aerial photo, and so, uh, Doug, having the aerial photo, you can see, for those of you who can kind of see where the gray changes, that's where the field changes to the woods. And the woods is the woods because it's really um, difficult to develop. So you kind of see there's this rough line. And that was actually kind of where I was hoping to put the parcel, but I put the line much farther into the woods where this is mostly undevelopable pieces of land. Um, 
So Mike, can you can you give us an idea of the um, so so for the upper pasture, which is zone rural, what percentage of that zone would this new strip make? Five percent was it five percent cutting into it? Five percent, one percent. Well, fortunately, it's a, it's a hundred acre parcel. So 85% of this parcel is currently zoned rural and 15% is currently zoned, you know, approximate numbers, 15% is zoned riverfront. So um, this adjustment will actually only make a 0.4% difference in the, in the actual amount of land because currently it's 14.1% percent riverfront and we're going to make it 14.5 percent riverfront and the city council was trying to have it 15 percent riverfront okay but but it sounds like maybe a half a percent of the entire thing is going to be m more on the upper parcel than than city council originally planned i wouldn't say originally planned they originally had planned on having 15 acres um, and when I drew the line, it roughly had 15 right. acres, but if you look right yeah. here, you've got this wedge that they don't own, and we've sent this in to get this boundary corrected. So, so, you're, so you're getting at another important piece of information, which is that it sounds like the city council did not have a specific upper boundary in line. They just asked you to give them something, and this is what you did. Yeah, they asked for for. Okay. A for a boundary, um, and I took what was on the tax map, which is this yellow line, which is wrong. This uh, gray line here is the more accurate line. And therefore, because, you know, in, in the rezoning, we rezoned that part that ended up not being land that they owned, so. Um, that, that, sound, that sounds like the final exam in a property law course. <laughs> doing over the tax map yeah so i had the tax map been right and we always try to tell people out there okay. what about this? it's like well, that's what you pay taxes on it doesn't mean it's right um that's what you're paying taxes on in this case the tax map should be corrected and and i believe um doug is submitting that to the assessor's office so they could send that because it is surveyed i mean this is the the gray line here is the surveyed line so we know this is the correct line okay can I just ask a procedural question? So, so if I understand right, this is an addition to what we already approved. So if we approve this tonight, this will just go be bundled in with those other packages, the other changes we asked for? Yes, so it's, a, there was originally a thought that because they had a little bit missed the window of the first public hearing that we would send this and present this first to city council. And what that would mean is um, city, in, in either case, at the planning commission level, after the public hearings, we are allowed to, you are allowed to amend the zoning uh, before submitting it to, to city council. There's no requirement of rewarning new hearings if there's, if there's a significant change. It goes to city council city council can hold the hearing and they can make whatever amendments they want whether they're in in the amendment or not so we were going to add it into that process the only caveat in process under state law is if they made a substantial change like voting to make this amendment it would have to come back to you guys you guys would have to have a meeting not a hearing but a meeting to discuss this change before making comments and submitting it back to city council for them to consider it further so because we, as we're doing it now if we agree because on this we were, tonight yeah okay. because because we hadn't and we were already going to vote to reconsider it we're kind of like well let's talk about it now then that'll save that that loop okay of, go back and have reconsider we can say hey, all right we're, we're going to look at it we're going to say it's okay with the caveat with the note that the city council should be aware and i will make them very aware of the fact that there was no public hearing on this I will be sending letters to all the abutting property owners um, prior to the, the new public hearing at the city council level. I will you know, be advising them that there was not a planning commission um, thing, so they should take whatever extra input that they need on this. If there's a lot of pushback from neighbors, um, I, I, 
I look at this through my eyes and think it's it shouldn't be creating that much of an issue, but maybe it does create an issue with somebody and they want to have a much bigger hearing process. But um, at least we'll make the city council aware of it and they can make their, their decisions on what additional measures they want to take um, as they review it. But it would at least cut out the fact that it doesn't have to get sent back to you guys. Okay. Anyone have anything else about this? Um, I mean, what, what are our thoughts? Um, I could say that I'm, I think this is reasonable. I think that this is within the spirit of what the city council was trying to do in the first place. This is, you know, a correction following the spirit of the city council's intention, but with new information. I agree, Kirby, and I think the parcel, like the parcel next door has a funky line through it as well, and to make it, you know, match the reality on the ground just seems pretty straightforward to me. This is not, I can't imagine that this is not, we're not close to the edge of the parcel really <laughs> anywhere, so it just seems reasonable to me. Anyone else have any thoughts? Anyone uh, have any reservations about this? Now would be a good time to mention those. Okay. Well, seems like that's easy enough, Mike. Thank you so much for the added details. Um, we can go on to the next item, I guess. Again, we'll be, we'll be, I think, approving things at the end. Yeah, I just put as a, as a letter E, consider any other amendments, because I, you know, I personally don't have any other amendments, but that would be, these were the three that we were going to entertain as I was putting together the agenda, as I said, I put in any other, just in case. Oh, came out of the see. oh, you don't have any new things. Nope, these were the three. None. We had to make three amendments. Okay. Whittier Street, the wetlands, and the riverfront district boundary. And then anything else, people, if, you know, again, we, we revised that. We went, um, as we said, we had our conversation at the last meeting. We made a number of revisions. If anybody has gone through or if anyone wants to go through any of those changes, um, I amended those maps, as I said, instead of just having one map that I don't know if this was any better, but I at least went through and said, this is the current zoning map. This would be the proposed boundaries because we do now have a proposed zoning map from CBRPC. So I've added in those additional um, details. Yeah, that's great. Did, did anyone have anything to ask about Whittier or, uh, or the wetlands changes? The wetlands changes seem like there's hardly any, there's not really anything substantive there. Um, it's just moving some things around, but uh, did anyone have anything on either of those? Okay. Um, did, did everyone have a chance to review the, uh, the memo? Were there any, any things to note for the memo? Okay. Does that mean we're ready for amendments? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's take it. Let's take it down the list then. Do we have? Uh, first, we we need we need a motion to reconsider the zoning amendment that we've already forwarded to the city council. Anyone inclined to move that we reconsider our suggestions for the city council from January 10th? Uh, I move that we uh, reconsider our recommendations to the city council. Okay. I second. We have, we have a second from, we have a, a motion from Aaron, a second from Gabe. Those in favor of reconsidering uh, our recommendations from January 10th, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so we are reconsidering those suggestions. 
Um, we've heard a proposal to uh, change our uh, original recommendation uh, related to 6 Whittier Street and Harrison Avenue. Um, do we have a, a motion to add 6 Whittier Street to that neighborhood? Um, and Mike, if you have a suggested way of phrasing this, let me know. No, I think that's fine. Um, a motion to add six Whittier to Harrison Ave map amendment is fine. Okay. I can I'll can. i move to add that parcel to Harrison Ave map. Okay. Uh, Mar Marcella's move to add six Whittier Street to the Harrison Ave map. Um, do we have a second? Second. Second from Aaron. Okay. Any discussion? I'm bad about that step. All right. Those in favor of, uh, of the amendment say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Okay. Aye. Oh, wait. Gabe, was that? No, I said aye. I think there was, uh, I think I, I'm okay. Okay. Okay, so you were in favor. Yes. Okay. It's good to clarify that. Um, okay. So uh, that motion passes uh, unanimously. Six zero. John Adams isn't here tonight. And uh, the next motion we would need would be to amend our proposal to the uh, city council to clarify uh, how wetlands hearings uh, work and when they're required. Hey, I just want to make sure. What's that, Aaron? Oh, I see. I'm just looking for. I was gonna. I was trying to see where it is in the memo, but I see it. Um. Okay. I'll move the change. Okay, Ariane moves to uh, to approve uh, how uh, how what Mike's proposed to clarify the wetlands hearing requirement. Uh, do we have a second? Second by Aaron. Any discussion? Okay. Those in favor of uh, the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So that motion also unanimous. Um, and lastly, uh, do, uh, do we have a motion to uh, amend uh, the uh, riverfront district boundary around Sabin's Pasture um, to adjust it as Mike has laid out? I move for those adjustments at Sabin's Pasture. Okay, motion from Gabe, do we have a second? Second. Second from Marcella, any discussion? Okay, those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, another unanimous. And uh, I believe that's all of the amendments we wanted to make. Um, does anyone have anything else? I was just curious. So when will the city council have the consideration of this? These changes? So city council, um, and it's mostly been, I believe, Bill having conversations with the mayor about the, the timing of the hearing. The concern was they didn't want to open the hearing. So first of all, once you open the hearing, that kind of both sets of regulations go into effect. It's a really messed up state law. So you don't want to have these open for, for too long because it, it starts to mess up people's applications. Um, so we'll wait until the last minute to warn the hearings. Um, 
and what they didn't want to have happen or what they didn't know was how long it was going to take to have the hearing. So they're pretty busy. Council's pretty busy with uh, the budgets and running for re-elections. And they either they would have to get through all the hearings and vote to adopt these before town meeting day, or they were going to have to wait till after town meeting day to open the hearing. And that's what they decided to do, because at least one council member is not running for re-election. So we didn't want to have some testimony given before and then have people who are new counselors who have, did not have the benefit of hearing that testimony. So they've just been holding it. So the first hearing, I believe, is going to be March 23rd. Don't hold me to that date. It's somewhere in that area. There's a council meeting. Um, and that's when they'll have their first. Um, they usually have a first meeting on it. And I will give a presentation with a PowerPoint. And I'll lay all these things out. Um, and then there'll be a second, you know, it'll be a warrant hearing, but it's mostly a meeting to present it to city council. And then usually they'll take uh, another meeting to take more testimony. And then at that point, it really depends on what they hear from the public. Um, if they get, you know, a lot of input from the public, they might warrant a third. Um, and boy, you didn't want to be here in 2017 when that was, I had 22 meetings with city council on that zoning amendment. Well, that was a zoning adoption, so that was a full revision, but that was 22 council meetings to get that through. Um, this one I would expect would be two, maybe at most three, um, starting on March 23rd. I guess the upside is that that provides a lot of opportunity for the public to see the memo, to see the changes. Um, a lot of notice for people big window so that's that's good at least um okay so to wrap this up uh we we need uh, a motion to approve all uh all of the changes all the amendments that we've that we've approved so far um and uh and to take those and to resubmit the entire proposal back to the city council So just does, or I guess worded differently. Yeah, so I, I move a, a motion to resubmit to city council as amended would be. Yeah, resubmit it as, as amended with these three. Okay. Uh, there's a motion from Gabe. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second from Marianne. Uh, do we have any discussion about this before we move on? Okay. Those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Another unanimous approval. And so there it is. We've, we're we're going to resubmit city council with those amendments. Anything else, Mike? Nope. That is good for that one. Thank you. Thank you for your patience with that and with the memo. So if, if you have any other um, clerical typo things, Kirby, on the memo, you can just send them to me tomorrow or, or in the next couple of days. I'll get that that um, memo finalized and I can start building. I've got to start building the website for the council and I can start getting this PDF and put up there so the public can start viewing it because so far it hasn't been a, a public document while it's been in draft form. So I left a I left a note in Google Maps. I think you'll be able to see it. Just one note. Um, let me know if you don't see it. Uh, but yeah, it uh, uh, goes for all the planning commission as you as you review the new version of the memo. Um, just let Mike know of any editorial, like stylistic type things. We're not talking about anything substantive. Just you know, like the thing I marked was just a place that was underlined that it looked like it was a. Uh, um formatting issue it, that's all okay looks like we're good on that then um thanks a lot for coming by and and being on call doug we appreciate that thank you for your consideration okay so the next thing we have is it looks like we do have about an hour left to review economic development goals and strategies. Um, how are people feeling about that tonight?
do we have any like strong feelings or would people be okay with just just waiting and and just tackling that at the next meeting and and making the full meeting about that um that's just where I, what i'm feeling but if other people want to want to proceed tonight and and not lose the time then i get it i'm not opposed to waiting i might feel more prepared myself but i can talk tonight too I understand that we wouldn't necessarily want to lose the time. But. So is everybody else okay with just putting it off to the next meeting and calling a little early for our winter break? Thumbs up from Marianne. All right. All right. Let's just let's just do that. So um, Aaron made a face. Got... What, what was the face? He... <laughs> Utter indifference. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good mafia type face, like you know. Uh, okay, let's just let's just do that. Let's let's tackle it cleanly next time. Everyone, read up on the goals and strategies. Uh, is there any work that needs to be done on this mic, or are they going to be in pretty pretty good order to vote on? Yeah, can I... we maybe just like a quick update of where we were and what we what we want to be prepared for to, to do next time so we can move it along fast. Uh, my, there it is. And, and we were working in the revised template, right? You were working in the revised template. So um, I think we had pretty much gone through and and approved. We'd reshuffled a couple of these uh, goals. We were all set with the aspirations. I think shuffled a couple goals. We were pretty good with it. We were starting to go through the strategies and like I haven't gone through to delete these. Um, I think we decided we were going to get rid of meaningful work. Um, I think we had started to talk about um, potentially maybe getting rid of the livable wage stuff. Um, if I remember that that conversation, um, but then we kind of kind of got bogged down. We hadn't really had much discussion, and I think you guys were going to go through and start to review what I had put in here as drafts and start to come up with comments. Um, you know, there's workforce development. These ones that are in, I guess, I'll call it a peach color. They were really ones that we in other chapters have talked about. Um, they're in the implementation strategy, but we really don't leave them in the implementation strategy. We talk about them in the chapter. So that's why if you'll notice in the right hand column, it'll say use in chapter, not implementation plan. So, um, so we had a number of things. Not all of these are good ideas. These are just ideas that are in here. These little headers kind of tie back to the previous <clears throat> goals. So the goals will have a discussion about resilient business environment. And these are a couple of things that a municipality can do to improve the and make a resilient business environment, or at least in my opinion. And if people have other ideas, um, you're welcome to. And I think uh, I also, if you notice in the column N, um, and I can see them on some of my computer here, um, it's got goals. This is what the goals associated with three, four, five, and six. Um, so that's all it's a bunch of stuff laid out and you guys are going to kind of review it not everything may stay um, make some thoughts or comments of what you're thinking you know um, maybe hotel and parking garage project should stay dead it is dead maybe it should stay that way um, but this is a little bit of what we're talking about and I guess the last thing before I, I send you guys off to work on it um, and really, so we're talking about the strategies in the revised template, just to start reviewing them. Um, but one of the big topics actually that's come out of the strategic plan, strategic planning at city council is a push to do more economic development. So uh, I'm getting ready today. I was trying to get the posting out. I didn't. Um, so our community development specialist is going to be leaving. Um, and so we're going to be posting for his position to rehire a new community development specialist and the position title is going to change to community and economic development 
specialist. So <clears throat> there's a push at city council to get and do more economic development now that MDC is no more. Um, so it's gonna be a, a kind of a little bit different position than it's currently been. We're gonna be working um, to, to hire somebody new to do that. They also wanna redo the EDSP. So they've got money in the budget to do that economic development strategic plan that we talked about. That's a very, it's kind of a fundamental document that most communities will do when you wanna do economic development, um, your EDSP. And uh, they wanna do that. They wanna get me to, to have an RFP out maybe in September, August timeframe so we can get a consultant on board for next winter to start working on revising our 2016 one, which which had a lot of value and a lot of good ideas. Um, it also had, you know, it was a little bit, um, it, it didn't have full support of the entire community, had a number of pieces in it that people didn't support. Um, I thought it was pretty good. I thought its presentation didn't always come across right. Um, you know, when we talk about trying to be a premium destination, it wasn't that we were trying to be elitist and trying to uh, avoid affordability and other folks. It was more a reflection of our reality that our downtown is a very expensive place to start a business. Um, and therefore, we really kind of need to make sure that it's, it's a difficult place for an entrepreneur to just jump in unless you happen to be an experienced entrepreneur. Um, you know, for example, trying trying to rent space in our downtown might cost uh, 18 22 dollars a square foot. You can go to Barry City for five to seven dollars a square foot. And you know, when you calculate those costs on an annual basis, you know, if if you're want to start a new a new business, this is an expensive place, and that was why that plan was looking at that being a premium destination because you know you need to be a business that's going to be able to generate enough income to be able to support the rents that currently it costs to be in Montpelier. So anyways, that turns out to be a longer discussion than probably you were looking for. Um, but just to give you guys a, a, a reference that we're talking about it now, and even before our city plan is adopted, what we are talking about at the next meeting will probably be um, you know, th this chapter may even be brought to city council before the city plan is is even moving forward. We may, you know, which we did with the housing plan. We pulled the housing plan to city council and said, hey, this is the housing plan. Um, we've got a lot of stuff going on. We gotta be moving. We can't wait for this to be adopted. Let's have a conversation and they did. I think we might do the same thing here with the economic development. We can really talk about things, really think about things and think about what do we wanna have if we were to have a meeting in say May or June with city council. Um, about economic development, um, what is it we think is our goal? What is our mission? And see what they think of what we're thinking. Um, you know, this one may this one may start becoming reality sooner than we think. So uh, when I spoke to Dan Groberg, he mentioned us waiting to do this until after the strategic plan, and I told him I don't think that timeline is going to add up because we're trying to get this city plan done because that strategic plan's a year a year for out, right, Mike? Um, yeah, yeah. We, so, would, we would have something in starting in September. Yeah. It probably wouldn't be till the following August, so 18 months from now. Um, so unfortunately, unfortunately, there's going to be all this economic development work and consultation done that's going to be after we do this. So, and that that thing's going to get a lot of economic development attention. We're supposed to be doing the city plan, which was supposed to be a guidance document, but yeah. So the timing is kind of unfortunate. Um, I guess it's. I guess maybe what we put here might influence that strategic plan that's done later. Um, but yeah, that's something for everyone to be aware of when they review this. Another thing uh, to keep in mind as you review for next time, uh, what I was hearing when we discussed this last was it sounded like there's interest in paring it down and focusing on two or three really key important areas instead of just trying to have cover everything a little bit. I thought that was a good idea. So if people want to embrace that more and do some work between now and the next meeting to isolate what those key areas are uh, and come back and talk about that, I think that would be that would be really interesting. Okay, does anybody else have any other like global thoughts about economic development before we 
review it and, and get back next time. Okay. So we'll see we'll see everybody next time on that. Um, we have to consider the minutes from January 24th. May as well get that knocked out. So if people can take a look at that. The minutes mention a, a phone call about the Whittier Street um, thing. Did you did you end up notifying the people at Whittier Street about um, us potentially making that change, Mike? No, we didn't have any any direct contact information, and so um, I did get their mailing address and all that information, but I didn't get a chance to send it out. I have been pretty busy. But okay, yeah, and that's, that's understandable. Yes, now that this well, is approved, be, I can start to lay it out to them to. Okay. Yeah, and they'll, they'll have. <laughs> if for some reason it causes them concern, they'll still have time before it goes to city council, I guess. That's not going to city council super fast, right? Yeah, okay. No, you said March. Probably about six weeks. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Just a real quick question. Kirby, do we, do we not make any changes to the solar shading stuff in the end? Did that not happen? No, I did. I, I, I went back and, and um, uh, I, I, Pared that down. I think it was like four or five paragraphs. I made it like one, one and a half paragraphs. So if you look at the new version of the memo, you'll see the solar shadings different. Do we need? Do we need to vote on that? No. No. Um, I mean, like, like uh, everyone has the new version of the memo. So if you if you have any issues with it let us know it's not it's not something we i don't think we have to vote out no i was i just it doesn't rise to the level of an amendment of it. i guess it's what i'm at. no there's the strikeout version i mean a lot of people look at the memo and think this is the the amendment um the actual amendment is the red line version which we don't talk about because the red line doesn't really help people because it's just a line through density and I, I think we voted on the memo in the first place, but we didn't really have to. I mean, because it's just described what we did. But yeah, people should check out the new version of the memo and make sure they're in agreement with everything there. As far as what I did was I just... John thought it was too long, so I took each paragraph and I turned it into a sentence, basically, making the same point, just with less description. Oh, are you were you okay with that, Mike? By the way, like I know. Yeah, no, um, most of them look most of them look good. Yeah. Um, I I didn't have any issues with the with how you had rephrase them like i said most of my small changes were pretty um minor edits to what you had put together okay you're really cool about how much we mess with the stuff you write by the way very humble that's it's not my strongest suit so i will just admit that up front and feel fine well about i mean it. well i don't i don't think of it as something that you're bad at we just tinker um so you know you don't ever seem to show a lot of ego about it. So I think that this speaks a lot about you. So do we have a motion for the, to approve the minutes? So moved. So moved by Aaron. Wait a second. Second. Second for Marcella. Okay, so in favor of approving the minutes from January 24th, say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay, minutes approved. One final motion of this meeting with lots of motions, and that's to adjourn. Do we have one of those? I move to adjourn. I will second. second. Okay, motion for Marianne, second for Marcella. You guys have a lovely night. Uh, the, <laughs> Those in favor of uh, the motion, say aye. 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 We're done. All right. Good night, everyone. See you. Thank you. Week.